This is lecture two for contextualization uh, in Christian mission. Uh, we'll cover the syllabus and a few other notes. Uh, in the syllabus, of course, the study and theory of practice of communicating the gospel and formulating theology in a way that is faithful to scripture and yet is meaningful to the respondents of their culture and their social context. And so as we go through this, this particular class, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to share the gospel in the proper context without changing the message. Again, I'll, I'll probably repeat it every time, uh, every lecture this semester, but if we change the message in any shape, form, or fashion, that's bad contextualization. Uh, the methodology has to change as time changes, but the message never changes. Uh, if we look at the uh, disciples and, and put Paul in there, uh, look at the, the different ministries that had the different ways that they uh, did ministry. Yet their message was always the same message. And that message is that, that they were lost in need of a Savior and Jesus Christ is that Savior. And so that's the message that we have today. And we may need to make sure that we don't somehow cheapen that. I recently today heard of a church um, in California that uh, one of the things that they're preaching is the fact that all you have to do is believe. There's no need for repentance whatsoever. And, of course, that's a very uh, divided topic right now. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to learn how uh, to, to communicate the gospel and formulate our message in a way that is true to Scripture. Again, Scripture always, if you have a high view of Scripture, Scripture always wins out. Uh, and we talked about that a little bit last time in that first video. So the institutional goals, I'll let you read yourself, uh, class procedures. Uh, do realize uh, that there are certain projects, for example, an eight to 10 page research paper that's due in week seven on Dr. Kraft's, uh, Charles Kraft's book, Issues in Contextualization. And I'll give a few more details in class for that. It's not due till week seven, but I want it to be a critical uh, analysis of what uh, is being said by Dr. Kraft. Is he on target or is he missing the target? Um, I don't ask that you believe everything that I believe, but I do ask that you defend what you believe and do it from an academic perspective. There, there are things that Dr. Kraft says that I question sometimes, uh, but I don't question everything that he says. Uh, he has a lot of good, I think, to offer, especially in understanding the issues of contextualization. He does a, a really fine work, I think, as does Charles Van Egan, he does a great job of it. And of course, as I shared last time, uh, Dr. David Hesselgrain. Uh, I think he, if, I, if he were still alive today, he would be the leading missiologist in my opinion, he would be the leading missiologist in the world today. Um, he and, and several others, Mark Terry and other people uh, that are there, Keith Isle, I think is a, is a very good missiologist. Uh, and of course, he was trained by Dr. Hesselgrave. He actually sat under Dr. Hesselgrave. Uh, Dr. Hesselgrave and I were in Colorado Springs, so actually he's in Palmer Lake, just outside Colorado Springs, a few years back. And uh, he had spent so much time in the Bible that when he began to to read, he just began to expound on things uh, at such a depth and such a level that really even challenged me to, to, to dig deeper. Uh, but anyway, so we, we've got some great writers that are out there that are thinking through these things because their goal is the same as our goal, and that is present the gospel of Jesus Christ effectively and efficiently so that people can understand it. But at the same time, we need to make sure we don't compromise the gospel in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, so, but the weekly assignments, uh, each week you'll write a 250 to 350 uh, word assessment of what is being described. So each week there's going to be a different topic. You'll read about something week one, you'll write on it. Week two, and then you'll write on it. And there'll be other things that you have to do along the way also. But the discussion board is a big part of your grade. And so what I want you to do is write a 250 to 350 word count uh, article or, or post on the uh, discussion board, and then, and that'll be, that'll be due on Thursday night of each week. And then the next Sunday night at midnight, the, uh, of course, I give you till 8 a.m. the next, until Monday morning, is responded to two of those from your classmates. So make sure that the project, the, the um, uh, Dr. Kraft's book is taken care of, but also make sure you do all the assignments. Uh, for some reason, sometimes, especially midway through, students seem to forget about the dis the discuss discussion post, and they'll just discuss they'll put theirs down, and they'll forget to go back and and uh, react or interact with their their 
uh, their uh, classmates. Uh, the third thing is a midterm will be given, and I'll talk more about that midterm as we get closer. I'll actually give you uh, some lecture notes that, I'll, that you'll be able to print out so you can study for this midterm. Uh, then also, uh, the final exam, uh, it'll be, uh, right now I have it at 40 questions. I think I'm gonna probably cut it down to 30 questions, the 30 of the most important ones. And it'll be multiple choice. There'll be multiple choice. There'll be true false. There'll be some fill in the blank. And there will be a couple of short essay questions in there. So what that means is uh, since it can't be A, B, A, B all the way down, uh, uh, since there are other factors in there, uh, I'll have to grade each one before you see the post. So if you do a, a, a test on Thursday or Friday, uh, you may not see the grade posted until Sunday or Monday. Uh, I do. Uh, check them every day, but sometimes for, for exams and papers, they all come flooding in, and so it might take me a day or two. But typically on assignments, uh, I'm typically going to have that back to you within two days. Uh, as I said earlier in my earlier uh, lecture, the uh, my response time to you through the phone and through email, same day. Uh, but my response to you on grading, I try to have it back within 48 hours of the submission, if not sooner. Uh, but there again, on those, some of these, the midterm, I will have to uh, actually grade those midterms because of the essay questions. I know what I'm looking for. And then the final thing is an oral interview and discussion with me personally. Uh, what I will want to do is between weeks five and eight, and I'll let you decide when you want to do that, but between, we, and I have a little sign-up sheet, between weeks five and eight, uh, I will want you to call me and we can do, we can do a, a Zoom call, uh, and I'll just have a series of questions I want to ask you and just get you to share your insight, what you have learned on it, and that will be a part of your grade. And uh, I'll tell you ahead of time before we get to that, uh, what exactly I'm looking for so that you know what I'm looking for. Again, let me go ahead and, and give you the required text again. Dr. Hesselgrave's book, uh, now it is an older book, it's from August of 2003, it is still uh, a, a book that's just on target. Otherwise, I, there's other new ones out there uh, but they're not on target as much. Uh, not with what I think we need to accomplish. Because here he, he talks about contextualization, meanings, methods, and models. And so those are, those are things we need to search through. The second one, of course, is Paul Heber's The Gospel in Human Context. It's an anthropological look at contemporary missions. And of course, he does deal with the issue of contextualization quite effectively. And then the third one was Charles Kraft, Issues in Contextualization. It's from August 2016, so it's a little bit newer work, not as old as a couple of the others. But all three of those books are just amazing books, and they will give you the material that you need. And if you'll read through them and understand them and discuss them, uh, and again, feel free to call me. If you're reading something you're not sure what you're reading, uh, give me a call, and let's talk through it, and let's see if we can help you get clarity on before you write. Uh, I'm here to help you, and anything I can do to to make it where you can learn more and, and progress well, then I, I want to do that. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the reading assignments. It's, uh, it, we're going to start out with Paul Hebert's book, and week one, all you have to read for week one is the preface and the introduction. Now, there is a question in there. There's a story that's told uh, in that introduction, and what I want you to write about is that story. Uh, they will, will tell about it, and... And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to write 250 to 350 words on the discussion board week one about Hebrews gospel in human context. And I want you to discuss the story that is told there and then ask the questions, is this proper contextualization or is it improper contextualization? And again, you'll write about it and then you'll write also uh, two posts. Uh, you'll respond to two posts from your uh, classmates. Uh, each week, you're going to read a different chapter. So week two is chapter one and chapter two, chapter three. <clears throat> Until week six, you get to chapter five and six together. They're a little bit smaller chapters, but they go together and fit together. It's why I put them together. And then week eight is chapters eight and nine again. They blend together. Uh, then for Dr. Hesselgrave, you're going to read in parts. He has four parts of the book, not chapters, but the parts. And so week two, four, six, and eight will be the... the weeks that you're responsible for those, and we will ask questions out of this on the discussion board. So you'll have some smaller assignments along the way with the discussion board, um, as well as listening to the lectures and things of this nature. And then week seven, as I shared earlier, is Kraft's 
issues in today's civilization. It's a critical book review. And what I want you to do is, is really examine it. Uh, when you examine it, you begin to write about it. If it's something you agree with, don't just say, oh, I agree with Dr. Kraft. You know, he's, he's brilliant. He's great. Um, but tell me why you agree with him. What is it that he has said that, that makes you agree with him? Or if you disagree with him, and I don't care if you disagree with him. If you disagree with him, though, do defend it academically. Say, I don't think he's on target here, and this is why. And then spell it out for me. You may find by doing that that you, um, especially on the discussion board posts, you might write a few more than 300, 350 words. And that's okay. Uh, I don't want to hold dissertation, uh, but at the same time, if you need extra words to, to really flesh out what you're saying, then please, by all means, do it. Um, I made a statement to a class a few years ago. So, you know, I've never had a class that made all ages. I had a huge class. I had 72. I was, I was, at, I was at Drew McConnell University, and I had 72 in my class. And I said, you know, I've never had a class uh, that had all A's. Everybody had all A's. I said, but it would be amazing if you would let me help you get all A's. And so I was able to, uh, to share with them, and, and we got very, very close to almost everybody getting A's in that class. I think there was 66 or 67 A's in that class. I said that to say this. I want you to get an A. Not because of an A or B or C steps, because I'm not into grades. But if you, if you earn an A, then what, what I'll know is that you know your material, you know your stuff, you know what you're dealing with, and you're prepared to engage the world. Again, I want to prepare you this semester to if God calls you anywhere in the world, you can go and you can take the gospel of Jesus Christ and you can see the places, whether it's linguistic, whether it's culture, or, or what, whatever it might be, that you are now prepared to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ in a way that's meaningful to them, the way that they get it, uh, and yet it's true and faithful to Scripture and to the text. And that's what we'll do. We'll always make sure that we maintain the integrity of Scripture. Again, uh, this is a Lecture 2 uh, for Week 1. Uh, if, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call me for any kind of clarification. I'd be happy to help you. I uh, look forward to working with you. Uh, my number is 910-269-8563. If it's in the uh, compartment on, online where it asks about your professor, my email and everything is in there. Uh, but I'm going to give that to you too. It's, it's H. Edward Pruitt, so it's all lowercase. H-E-D-W-A-R-D-P-R-U-I-T-T at gmail.com. And again, my, my cell number is 910-269-8563. Please don't hesitate to call. And uh, we're just going to have a wonderful semester together. God bless you, and I hope your, your week one is very successful.